Hey everybody, welcome back to another Tech Talk here with me at GR Research. This is one I've been kind of looking forward to for a little while. I've been, I've been mulling this over in my head and thinking about this, this one for quite a while. And I've been wanting to come back to it and I've just been trying to plan things out as how I want to present this. I'm going to break this whole series down into several segments. And when I say the series, I mean a little segment on, or a little series on cables and what, what cables are really doing. And I'm gonna break it down and address the subjective versus objective camps that we seem to get out there. And the, um, the guys that I tend to call the flat earth guys and why, why I do that. Uh, why am I poking at those guys like that? And um, we're gonna look at the cable test that I did where I showed that all cables are either part antenna or they're part filter. And some cables are more of a filter than others. Some are more of a antenna than others. And it was an interesting test. And a lot of the, what I call the flat earthers out there, the science only guys, they just, they came out in full force. They jumped all over that and uh, had to get their two cents in. And I want to address some of those things. And then um, we're going to look at a little experiment that I've set up, a little, I guess I should say a little demonstration to show and to illustrate what's going on on the cables. It's gonna be a, something where I'm gonna show you measured results, which I know a lot of you guys think, ooh, ooh, measure, it's gonna show some measurements. But it's not measurements like you would think. I'm not measuring something on a cable. I'm taking some measurements to illustrate what's happening. So what I'm trying to do is take all of this and bring it down into layman's terms. I'm not gonna draw out a whiteboard here and get out the, the graphs and the markers and try and do a bunch of math and calculus and theory of what's going on and try and prove down to the whatever that here's what's happening. No, I'm gonna put this into terms where everyone can get it. And I'm gonna try and illustrate all of this in layman's terms. So. Bear with me as I wrestle with that too. And then, um, then we're gonna talk about the most important tool of the trade, what it all comes down to. And I'm not just talking about your ear, and I'm not talking about measuring systems, but I'm talking about the tool that you use to determine what it is that you're hearing. That's gonna be an interesting one. And then last, but not least, I'm gonna talk about our new power cables that we're doing and we got a couple different ones we got one of them out there available right now you can see it on our website and that's how we're going to kind of conclude this but you need to get a little of this background and understanding before we get into power cables because i know there's going to be a bunch of these guys out there they're going to say snake hole snake hole and th those guys have no clue as to what's going on and i can't wait to address those guys and part of those those guys i'm referring to um, is the reason I, I think I have this t-shirt. Somebody sent me this t-shirt. It says not flat, meaning the earth is not flat. The earth is round. And because I keep referring to these guys as flat earthers because they don't do any science. And I know there's people out there that say, but Danny, those are the guys that are doing the science. They're the ones that are wanting to prove everything by measurements. I understand that, but they're not using any science. <laughs> they are using what they can measure to justify their belief system. But when it comes to hearing anything that is evidence to the contrary, they're like this, no, 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 no. <laughs> they don't wanna hear it. They don't wanna hear anything that contradicts their beliefs. Just like the guys that believe the earth is flat. And there's people who believe the earth is flat and I'm not picking on those people, but I'm likening these guys into those people because they think the earth is flat and they think that all cables sound the same and they don't want to hear anything to the to the contradictory of that belief. And so one of you guys sent me a nice flat earth globe, which I think is hilarious. Um, someone sent me this t-shirt and it came with a little pin that says not flat that I can wear um, and a little uh, card here that is uh, oneworlddesigns.com it looks like. And I'm not sure really what all this is supposed to be about as far as 
combating the thought of the earth being flat or it's it's saying opening up your mind to realities being open-minded i don't know specifically what their message is but it was definitely sent to me uh, so that i could wear this shirt for one of these videos and firmly say that the earth is not flat and cables matter so why am i calling these guys that um again they want to measure and test everything. They want to say that every cable has inductance and capacitance and resistance. And they do. Every cable has those things. And we can measure that on every cable. Uh, what does that mean, though? Is Does low inductance or higher inductance better or capacitance or lower and higher? And what's going on there? And I thought about getting into that and going specifically into some of those things and trying to discuss it. And then I thought, no, no, why am I doing that? That doesn't matter. The, the average audiophile, the average listener doesn't care about the specifics. They want to know, does it sound better or not? So these uh, objective guys are, are holding upon the concept of measuring. They're saying if you can't measure difference, then there's no difference. Well, that's not true um, because most of the time they're measuring the wrong thing. It's like going and putting new shock absorbers on my car and then taking it out to see if it runs any faster. And then say, well, that didn't make it run any faster at all. So there was no, no change in changing the shocks. Well, changing the shocks makes it ride a lot smoother. It doesn't make it go faster. And uh, same goes for this, uh, for this in cables. A lot of these guys, they're measuring something and they're not measuring for the things that are making the difference that you're hearing. They're just measuring inductance, they're measuring capacitance, uh, they're measuring the resistance, and they're thinking, well, less resistance is better. And to some degree, less resistance is, is a good thing. But um, it's not all about just having the lowest resistance. If resistance was all that matters, and a lot of these guys say low resistance is all that matters, all you need is a, a big cage cable. If that were the case, then let's just get a big aluminum cable about this big in diameter, which is cheaper than copper and that would have lower resistance right so it must sound better no no nope, that's not going to sound better what about um what about if we just used a big piece of um steel rod um like a uh, uh what do you call it uh rods that they use and that they pour concrete in why am i why am i having a senior moment wow i know what that stuff is so what if you're just using one of those big metal rods and would the resistance be lower? Well, it would be lower because it's big in diameter, so it's going to conduct electricity very well. Is it going to sound better? No. No, it's not going to sound better because you're using a, a big steel rod. No, that won't, that won't sound good at all. It's not just a matter of the resistance, and it's, it's more than just the type of metal that it's made out of. It's... It's not just that it's copper, it's the purity of the copper. It's everything that goes on. Because you got to remember, you're hitting on one end of the cable and expecting the same thing to come off on the other end of the cable. And there's a whole bunch of things going on in between that changes that or adds to it or takes away from that. So, yes, there's a lot going on. But you have to ask the right questions. In audio, it's all about listening. I mean, that's what audio is. It's listening. It's what we hear. The whole hobby is about what we hear. It's about enjoying music and the drive to take things to the furthest degree in that direction. Like, how good can it get? How much more enjoyment do I get out of this audio system by making it better, to make it sound more real, to make it sound more open, more transparent, more everything. It's all about what we hear. So the question should never be, and I'm thinking about the guys over on the left now, if it measures different or not. Forget, forget that for a moment. The question is, does it change the way it sounds? Now, if we're scientists, and we're real scientists, and we want to answer the question, and this is the question, does it make it sound different? Or does it make it sound better? The only way to answer that is with a listening test. If your whole science project of trying to figure out 
if a cable is different than another cable, if one cable sounds better than another, another cable, doesn't involve listening, you're not doing any science. You're not doing any science. You're just, you're just doing enough to hold to your beliefs. You're measuring the wrong thing and it didn't make any difference in the measurement. You did an, a test and a null test and you didn't see a difference on your scope. So there must not be a difference there, right? No. No, that ain't, that's not the way to go about the whole thing. You either hear a difference or you don't hear a difference. And I know the science guys are going to say, man, your ears can play tricks on you and this and that. And you, there's, there's placebo effects and all. Oh, my goodness. This all comes down to music enjoyment. Does it make your listening experience better? So in order to answer that question, you have to listen. And, hey, don't get me wrong. I'm all about the measurements. Everything I design is based on measurements. I'm looking at the acoustic output of each speaker and, and the time arrival of each thing and the stored energy and I'm, I'm taking measurements of everything, everything I can do. Those are tools. Those are tools to help me in my design work. Those tools don't tell me specifically how things are going to sound. The tools tell me if there's problems or not. If there's a problem there, I can see it and I know that certain problems that I see, I can hear. So I can go in and correct those problems. But then once I have it done, I can go in and change the way the speaker sounds by changing capacitors, changing inductors, changing the wiring, changing the connectors, changing the type of solder that I'm using, changing a whole bunch of things that can have very subtle to very dramatic effects. And in some cases, I've demonstrated speakers that have the same crossover replicated with higher quality parts. So we can play crossover a or crossover B, which are just alike in the way that they measure. And every way that you want to measure it, as far as measuring a loudspeaker, measures the same. Parts, specs, right there on the money. But they sound really, really different. So, again, it all comes back to, does it sound different? Does it not sound different? That's the question you have to answer. Now, you may be able to do some measurements to support what you're hearing, and I'm all about that. When I hear something that's completely different, I think, how can I validate that? How can I, how can I quantify that so that I can see repeatable difference quantifiably and audibly? I'm that guy. I want to go back and figure out why I'm hearing what I hear. But I never go and start with a measurement and say, the measurement is this, therefore, when you do that, you were not doing any real science. You're jumping to a conclusion based on what you see. That's not science. Science is testing what you have, have theorized to see if it's true or not. Whether you've theorized that cables will make a difference or they won't make a difference, it still comes back to the fact that you have to listen in order to confirm or disprove one way or another. That's what I want to get across in this first segment. And that's why I call these guys flat earthers. They don't do the science. They're only part way there. They think they're doing science. They're not doing science. Next, I want to go in the next segment, I want to go and revisit what I did with the cables that I use to measure RF noise or RF reception, I should say. And let's relook at that and talk about that. That one will be next.